They've been called masters of chaos, green berets, frogmen, swift and silent killers. They're the elite warriors of U.S. Special Operations Command, or SOCOM. The qualities in a good special operator have to be physically fit. You have to be highly intelligent. At times, you have to be very humble, uh, dealing with other nationalities and other indigenous personnel. From his headquarters at Bagram Air Force Base, Colonel Sean Mulholland commands the Combined Joint Special Operations Task Force, Afghanistan. They can deal with different environments, deal with different types of people, and make the mission work for them. First activated in 1987, SOCOM now numbers more than 50,000 unconventional warfare specialists from the Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marines. They deploy around the world in some of the most dangerous and sensitive missions undertaken by our armed forces always been a guy that wants a challenge and I thought this was definitely the, uh, the road that I needed to go down to continue to challenge myself both physically and mentally. Captain Dave Gunther, the Army Special Forces, leads a 12-man operational detachment Alpha or ODA in western Afghanistan. We had a couple other key individuals that I got paired up with and we were able to outfit the team and we put together the training schedule from scratch. War Stories was permitted to reveal some of the Spec Ops personnel, others we were entrusted to keep secret. We've got a good mix of people, and, and nowadays you've got from anywhere from a guy who's 24 years old to a guy who's 40-something years old. And they operate with a U.S. Marine Spec Ops unit in a command that's the first of its kind. We're approximately 100 strong, broken up into smaller teams operating uh, independently at fire bases uh, throughout western Afghanistan. Major Eric Cloutier leads Marine Special Operations Company Hotel. When SOCOM was organized, the Marine Corps didn't have any units assigned. But in 2006, when the Marine Corps Forces Special Operations Command, MARSOC, was established, Cloutier volunteered. At that time, I was the operations officer of 2nd Force Reconnaissance Company. MARSOC was being developed and Force Recon was one of those units that was thrown around as being a major part of building Marine Corps Forces Special Operations Command. The Secretary of Defense recognized that he needed more application across the globe where terrorists tend to harbor, gravitate, train, recruit. General Maston Robeson commands the 2,500 Marines of MARSOC. The Marine Corps is an absolute natural fit for that. I decided to put them out in the West alone, autonomous, they are with one Special Forces ODA. This is the first time a Marine Special Operations team and a Detachment Alpha have been paired together in combat. There's a period of confidence building with our fellow warriors within SOCOM, as you would expect. No warrior worth his salt takes somebody on his flank, unquestioned, unseasoned, untested, and said, I'll trust you. So we fully expected our metal to be tested. But I was skeptical at first. But uh, this has by far been one of my best deployments I've been on. It was as if these two teams that are out here were destined to work together, just from the personality, the different skill sets, um, and the same mentality that we both had about conducting business. Our primary mission uh, is to train and advise and employ the Afghan National Army to include a select commando unit that we are officially partnered with. Our War Stories team lived with and accompanied the Afghan Army's 207th Commando Battalion, led by Colonel Abdul Jabbar. Describe for us your relationship with the Americans who are here on this base. We are working with Special Forces and Marines, training our commandos, and everything is going very well. The Afghan Commando program right now is, is hands down the best program for Afghan National Security Forces. They train together, they're outfitted, um, and they get an you know, extremely good program of instruction from the operational detachments. We do nothing without the Afghans. Our philosophy is to do things by, with, and through the Afghan people. New technologies have revolutionized the battlefield, but for SOCOM warriors, the human component remains front and center. They must be able to adapt to and blend into the cultures in which they live, train, and fight. Special forces, they work best when they've gone to that tribal leader, told them what we can provide, how we can help, gaining his trust. And then and only then, he will tell his men, go work with the Americans. Facial hair in those tribes and in certain parts of the world is very, very important. 
they don't trust people that don't have mustaches and beards, and so you're going to do that. Some specific mission sets that we uh, perform out here require us being able to uh, blend in a little bit more with the local population. This goes back to the days of Vietnam where these guys would sit down and smoke and drink certain concoctions along with the tribal elders. They can never leave their character as American warriors, but yet they must adopt some of the local culture. Walking that fine line is something Special Forces do well. The Marsaw team that we're with is hands down one of the best teams I've ever worked with. We're both built a little different, but we both bring different ideas, and having the two different ideas makes missions run smoothly. The Marines and soldiers uh, work together. They don't care what uniform they're wearing. Uh, they have a common mission, common goals, and they're uh, making it work out there together.